Good morning. Welcome to the Spiritual Exercises. I'm Carol Ann Weaver, and uh, I'm from uh, my ministry is called Body and Soul Companion. And this is week two of uh, the preparation days for the spiritual exercises. We've been going through the eras of your life. Um, and this is the second week, second round of going through the eras of your life. And we're in, we did early adulthood yesterday and we're doing adulthood um, 30 and on. And if you're under 30, just spend some more time anywhere in uh, your timeline, just remembering memories. So before we start, I'd like to go over the flow of prayer. I call it the daily prayer flow. And I do it with you, most of it with you, but just wanted to go through how Ignatius introduced um, prayer. It's just a way to, um, it's just his method of preparing for prayer and and going into prayer. But I love it. And you, uh, hopefully you've loved it too. But the first thing we do is receive God's loving gaze. Uh, we take the time to enter into God's loving presence. And I often quote uh, a quote by Anthony DeMello. He was a Jesuit. Behold God beholding you and smiling. And we take time to really enter into God's presence. And remember, he's pleased to have you with him in the prayer time. And then there's usually a preparatory prayer. Um, I pray that more and more of my day would be committed or directed to your service and praise. And just to, so you set your intention for the day. And then I always say you might like to light a candle during that time, but I lit a candle at the before we started. And then every week there's a different grace that's sought. Um, I ask God... Um, for what I want and desire, ask God for the grace for whatever the subject matter is that day. And then there is a contemplation or meditation or a combination of both. If you notice, sometimes I do that. Um, uh, contemplation, imaginative contemplation. I have a handout on it if you'd like. We haven't done a full imaginative contemplation, but usually you do that with narrative scenes where you can put yourself in the scene, imagine what it would have been like to be there when this happened. Um, and usually it's done in gospel with Jesus, gospel narratives, but I do it in Old Testament narratives too. Um, for instance, Abraham and Isaac going up for the sacrifice. I do an imaginative contemplation for that. And then for everything else, at, we do a Lexio Divina style meditation where we relax and receive, relax into God's presence, receive his presence, and then we read that's called Lectio. Then we reflect on the second reading. We reflect on a word or phrase that shimmers for us. And that's called Meditatio. And then the third is or Oratio or Ratio. And that's responding. So it's rest and receive and relax into God's presence. Read, respond, or reflect. And now it's respond, respond. In prayer to God and then the last is rest where we have a time of silent prayer just centering our gaze on God and then as a result of that um, you I, I encourage you to take your candle or go outside take a walk or just go to a different place you don't have to but to have a colloquy it's called a colloquy but I just call it a conversation with God as friend to friend and then there is a review of your prayer time and just journaling the gist and I have a review of prayer questions that I've gone over a couple times already and then the goal of the exercises is to live the graces you are asking for each week as the background of your day so just um, you might want to take that word or phrase from the scripture you meditated on and go into your day just where did I where did it play out in the day. Yesterday I had something really play out in the day um, from my meditation time in the morning. 
So, and then separate from that, or sometimes I do it even before I start the, this whole flow of prayer, is there's a prayer of examine. And I didn't do the prayer of examine for years. Um, and there's a whole video explaining the prayer of examine, but you do it either in the morning and you examine and become aware of where you saw God in your previous day, or you do it at the end. So it's a, it can be a separate prayer time from the one we're in now. So that is it in a nutshell. So I invite you to close your eyes. Oh, one thing I, I did want to mention this week, I, I talked about the flow of prayer being meditation um, on the scripture, but this week I also add basically in a meditation on your life, just a recalling of memories in your life. And that's part, that's kind of woven into the prayer period too. But that's just for these first two weeks. I want to really have you look at your life. So let's close our eyes. Take a deep breath. And focus your gaze on God, remembering that He is gazing and looking upon you with love. And spend time receiving God's gaze. Lord, we pray that more and more of our day would be directed to your service and praise. And we seek the grace to have a deep felt awareness of your loving presence throughout our lives. So with that, I'll read Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For it is he who delivers you from the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you may seek refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and bulwark. You will not be afraid of the terror by night or of the pestilence that stalks in darkness or of the destruction that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not approach you. You will only look on with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. For you have made the Lord my refuge, even the Most High your dwelling place. No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent. For he will give his angels charge concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will bear you up in their hands that you... Do not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you will trample down. Because he has left me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him securely on high because he has known my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With a long life, I will satisfy him and let him see my salvation. So just sit with that reading for a few moments.
Now with this next reading, we're asking God to give us a word or a phrase that sticks with us or shimmers, stands out for us, whatever. And a lot of times I like to take just the first thing that pops into my mind that really, I don't question it, I just let it stick. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For it is he who delivers you from the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you may seek refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and bulwark. You will not be afraid of the terror by night or of the arrow that flies by day, of the pestilence that stalks in darkness or of the destruction that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not approach you. You will only look on with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. For you have made the Lord my refuge, even the Most High your dwelling place. No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent. For he will give his angels charge concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will bear you up in their hands that you do not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you will trample down. Because he has loved me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him securely on high because he has known my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With a long life, I will satisfy him and let him see my salvation. What word or phrase stood out to you? Reflect upon that word. Mull it over in your mind. this next reading, you'll have an opportunity to respond to God in prayer. That's a ratio, a ratio. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for it is he who delivers you from the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you may seek refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and bulwark. You will not be afraid of the terror by night or of the arrow that flies by day, of the pestilence that stalks in darkness or of the destruction that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not approach you. You will only look on with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked, 
for you have made the Lord my refuge. Even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near you, your tent. For he will give his angels charge concerning you, to guard you in all your ways. They will bear you up in their hands, that you do not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and cobra, the young lion and the serpent you will trample down. Because he has loved me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him securely on high, because he has known my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With a long life I will satisfy him and let him see my salvation. Now's the time to respond to God in prayer. Feel free to turn off the video if that's not enough time, but I'll read it this last time, and then we'll go into a time of rest, contemplatio, just resting in God's presence, focusing your gaze on Him. And sometimes I like to have that word or phrase be the thing that helps me focus on Him. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For it is he who delivers you from the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you may seek refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and bulwark. You will not be afraid of the terror by night, or of the arrow that flies by day, of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, or of the destruction that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your sight, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not approach you. You will only look on with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. For you have made the Lord my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent. For he will give his angels charge concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will bear you up in their hands, that you do not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and cobra, the young lion and the serpent you will trample down. Because he has loved me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him securely on high, because he has known my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With a long life I will satisfy him and let him see my salvation. Let's enter into a time of rest and contemplation.
glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So now we're going to uh, just ask God to give us a memory. It doesn't have to be adulthood. That's the section we're in, but um, just a memory from adulthood anywhere. If you're past, if you're in your 30s or 40s or 50s or 60s or 70s, <laughs> just any time past your 30s. And of course, if you're under 30, you just go to any memory that God brings. So I invite you to close your eyes and Lord, we just ask that you would give a memory of uh, from our childhood or from our, our adulthood, sorry, uh, just a memory from our lives, anywhere in our lives, really. Maybe perhaps uh, what you might want to do is have a memory where he literally did um, guard you in all your ways and bear, bear, bore you up in his hands and rescued you. And maybe that might be something, but it doesn't have to be that. Um, just a memory, um, maybe where you saw God at work in your life. Um, and even in a painful one, uh, where God worked out from that painful memory. So I invite you to close your eyes. Asking God to give you a memory. And when you get that memory, relive it in your mind. Where were you? What do you see? What do you hear? What do you smell? Touch? Taste? To relive the scene. And then ask God what he wants you to know from that scene. What does he want to impress on your heart? And then it, when you're ready to go on, give it a title so you can put it in your memory back and bank and maybe even write it in your uh, journal as you review your time of prayer. What's a title for that memory? Thank you, God, that um, every day of our lives, 
you are with us. And even in painful memories, you're, you're drawing us to yourself. So I just pray you'd um, help us to more and more see your loving presence in our lives. Through this day and through the end of the week. In our whole lives. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> Just to share, my memory was in adulthood. And uh, I was lied about by a person I was doing a partnering with. Who had a bad reputation. Um, but I um, didn't listen to other people telling me about this person's bad reputation. I had been gone um, out of the country for two years and didn't know all the things that that person had done and um, didn't want to hear what other people were warning me about because I liked this person and I wanted to help this person. So we partnered. There was jealousy on this person's part so she slandered me to just about everybody because she didn't like um, because she was jealous in ministry and uh, so my memory was me laying on my bed crying in my old house just uh, devastated by the slander and that people were believing her slander <laughs> and that you know a lie goes halfway around the world before the truth ever gets its shoes on and I just remember praying in God bringing actually this verse to mind these verses to mind and I feminize it I make it because she has loved me therefore I will deliver her I will set her securely on high because she has known my name she will call upon me and I will answer her. I will be with her in trouble. I will rescue her and honor her. With a long life, I will satisfy her, and she will behold my salvation. And just as I was praying and crying, and God, I, God saying, I, I, me just crying out to God for him to deliver me, it was just so painful to have someone. My husband said I'd sit at the table, and I just wasn't there. And I may have shared this story already. Oh, who knows? I can't remember. In one of my memories from last week, it might be the same one. But all that to say is, um, immediately after praying that, I had my mobile. It wasn't even a cell phone because I don't think they were invented yet. And um, but it was a, a non-cord phone, and it rang. It was right next to my bed, and. Um, uh, it was a woman who actually my best friend had, um, one of my best friends had, had led to Jesus many years earlier. And I didn't know her super well, but I knew her because of my best friend. And she called me up and said, she said, I, I heard that you lead a study on marriage. And uh, I was wondering, I have a group of people um, that I've gathered and I'm wondering if you could lead us in that particular study and it was just a I, I say a lifesaver for me God just delivered me from this person um, and um, just I remember being in the shower with that so anyway I ended up leading study with this woman and what was so beautiful is that um, I say she was a lifesaver but she a few years later um, set me a role of lifesavers and how I was a lifesaver in her life and she was um, ready to punt her faith <laughs> and and it's just we've been friends ever since so that was just a wonderful memory and just that person God I was in the shower and I felt God was saying I gave you discernment for a reason use it you know you had red flags all the way, along the way um, Carol you just didn't listen to me you didn't listen to those, that discernment that I gave you. Um, going into partnership with this person was the wrong thing to do. And that person ended up abandoning their husband and children not too long after that. It was, um, I just, uh, it's a sad, sad, it was a sad commentary.
So, not to end on a sad note, God delivered me. He bore me up with angel's wings. So, bye. Have a good day.